Okay, I'm going to try and help you make as few mistakes as possible on the graphing final. Again, this is something I don't have any control over in terms of the format uh, of this portion of your tests. And so I want to make sure you understand what are some of the difficulties that come with doing this. So first of all, hopefully by now you are prepared to know how to graph these, graph these two together, first for your demand curve and these two together for your supply curve uh, on the sheet behind. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and give you a chance to get that done. Does your curve look like this? What are you supposed to label this? Okay, hopefully you have D1. Hopefully your supply curve looks like this and what should you label it? S1. Alright, now let's take a look at what's going on here. Make sure you read the scenario very carefully otherwise you could get lost in the final graphing. So the rent <clears throat> price of studio apartments is determined by market forces. Currently the demand and supply uh, are as follows. We graph this. Now, graph the demand curve and the supply curve. We did that. Now here's the tricky thing with the quiz. Sometimes there's several different directions on the same line. This next a bit of directions, you might not notice it if you don't read everything carefully. Mark and label the equilibrium point. So I'm going to do that on mine. Maybe you should go ahead and do that on yours. What would this be labeled? What would this be labeled? Now, might be if you're one of those people who really want to make sure you get 100%, check, did that, oop, check, did that, keep track of what you have and haven't done. Don't skip ahead, take it step by step, otherwise some students who don't pay attention to my instructions of not skipping ahead, they start losing points right down here because they lose track of what's going on. Okay, so write out the equilibrium price and quantity equilibrium quantity determined by market forces. So now you describe in English in a full sentence what's going on here. You did that on yours and I'll do that on mine. Okay, hopefully your answers are similar to mine. If you don't have these two words, those are that's a point that you will lose on the test. If you don't have this dollar sign, that's a point you'll lose on the test. If you don't have this, that's a point. Same with equilibrium quantity. If you have 5 here instead of 500, that would be losing a point on the test. If you didn't put studio apartments, that's losing a point on the test. Every single bit matters, so make sure that you are thorough. Okay, suppose there were an earthquake in San Francisco and one-third of the homes are destroyed. Due to our proximity to San Francisco, many of its refugees would likely move here. So, how would this affect the market for studio apartments in Sacramento? explain why. So they're asking for two different answers here. In our quiz quizzes that we took on supply and demand, there were two different boxes where you needed to write sentences. That's what you do here. Box number one answer, box number two answer. How does this affect the market and why? What's the determinant going on here? Okay, you do it on your paper, I'll do it on mine. So demand for studio apartments will increase that's the first question I answered. And then why? Due to an increase in number of consumers. Hopefully you have all of that because every single piece of that is worth points on the final. Next step. Show this change by drawing your new curve on your graph in question 1A. You draw the new curve here. But make sure you read everything you're supposed to do. Don't just draw the new curve, you also need to mark and label the new equilibrium. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of work to do here. I suggest strongly that for each one of these steps in the process, you choose a different color on your graph. I'm going to choose a new color to plot the new demand curve. Will the demand curve shift to the right or to the left? And what will I label this new demand curve? 
And now I have a new equilibrium. So, bring this down. What do I label it here? And what do I label it here? Okay, so again, I suggest you check. Uh, drawing your new curve, and check. I drew the new curve. Um, drew the new equilibrium. Notice the question didn't ask me to label the new curve, but you better believe you need to label it in order to get full points. So, got that, got that. Moving on to the next step. Now, suppose that after this event, uh, some landlords or landlords continue to rent studio apartments at that old price. So we have this equilibrium price up here, but what if some landlords still used this price? Now what we're doing now is we're putting one of those arbitrary prices in, one of those random prices. So you pick a new color, and you take it all the way across, all the way across, like I, I instructed you several times. So the price is, somebody's put the arbitrary price at $1,000. So I'm going to take this strange non-equilibrium price all the way across, and then I'm going to label it what? P3. All right, this is not equilibrium. It used to be, but it's not anymore. This is equilibrium. So now we've got to do what? We've got to figure out whether there is a shortage or a surplus. So I put that price in there, but now I've got to take these down. Okay, so which curve am I going to take this down from the, for the quantity demanded? From here or from, from the D2 where it connects to the D2 or where it connects from the D1? D1, it's like D1 never existed. So now we have to pretend, and this is not equilibrium, this is quantity demanded. Make it match here. And so then where does this weird arbitrary line touch the current supply curve? Right over here. So that gives me not equilibrium, Q for quantity, and it's touching the supply curve. Now the supply, again, make it match. Three. All right, so what does that give us? Here's equilibrium, and we're down here. That tells us we have a what? We have a shortage. And then how do we explain this? in a full sentence. Take a look at these. How do we describe this? What's what's going on here? Why do we have a shortage? Because quantity supplied is less than quantity demanded. Okay. On this smart supply short. All right. Last one. Last step. Now suppose that a new apartment complex were built in downtown Sacramento. How does this affect the market for studio apartments in Sacramento? Is that a supply thing or a demand thing? And show the change by drawing your new curve on the graph and label your new equilibrium point. So go through check by check, give yourself a check mark that you got it done as you go. How does this affect the market for studio apartments? It affects supply, and what does it do? Increase or decrease supply? 
it increases supply. So here we go. Here's my new supply curve. Da -da -boom. Label it what? Now, let me check mark I did that. Show the change by drawing a new curve on the graph. I drew the curve. I gave it a label. Label your new equilibrium point. Okay, so I'm going to need to label the new equilibrium point. Now, where is equilibrium when we have now? Is it the intersection of S1 and D1? Is it the intersection of S1 and D2? Is it the intersection of D1 and S2? Or is it the intersection of S2 and D2? Always the most recent, and the way you know which are the most recent is the ones with the higher numbers. It's like D1 never existed. It's like S1 never existed. This is now our point of equilibrium. We bring this down. Call this equilibrium quantity. Ooh, we're at number four now. Equilibrium quantity number four. And whew, we got very little space here. Equilibrium price four. And that's how it's done.